What is going on YouTube? It's the Sports Star back with another video on the channel. And today we are doing our final 2024 mock draft. It's been uh, quite the ride. I'm honestly kind of getting sick of these prospects. So let's just get them on their teams and get the season rolling. What do you think? Yes, sir. Almost time, almost time for the almost time for the season to start back up again. Yeah, about that time. So I've got the odds. He's got the evens. Let's get right into it. So the Bears number one. It's pretty obvious. Caleb Williams, uh, clear cut favorite to go number one. They need a quarterback. Caleb is their guy. And it's up to you now for the Commanders. Commanders on the clock. Just realized I was muted there, my bad. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz here about Jaden Daniels, but I think that these the Commanders are still gonna go Drake May. I think he just is gonna fit that system pretty well. Yeah, I like that. I like that pick. I think it's truly between those two. Oh, for sure. Um, they need quarterback. I like Drake May better. I don't know if the commanders do or not, but regardless, yeah, I mean, this mock we're going Drake May. Yeah, I mean, it's also all smoke screens and mirrors until the pick is actually in. You know, last year we had everything from, you know, Will Levis to Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud going in number two. So really until the pick is in, you can't call it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, number three, Patriots. They could totally go with wide receiver. I don't think, I think some arguments for Marvin Harrison Jr. here are because they don't have the quarterback. And so you need to build around, you need to build a team before you draft the quarterback. I think that's some people's arguments. You don't want to ruin a project quarterback. So I see, I see where they're coming from. But to be honest, I think that Patriots just want a culture change. They need Jaden Daniels. They haven't had a quarterback since Brady left. And honestly, they Jaden Daniels might be a project, but I think that if he's if he can come out and do what everyone thinks he can do, I think he could be a top, I don't know, five, six quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, in the first step for many new uh, many new regimes is to get their uh, regime's quarterback in. And honestly, I don't think there's many guys I'd rather have to build my team around than Jaden Daniels. You know, he's, he has the potential to be one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL, like you said. Yeah. And I think if they do a good job with the rest of the draft, then passing on Marvin Harrison Jr. shouldn't come back to haunt them. Yeah, for sure. All right, number four here, the Cardinals. I think that they go Marvin Harrison Jr. here. You know, they went Paris Johnson with their first uh, first round pick last year. And so I think they just need to build up that wide receiver core around Kyler. 100%. All right, with the Chargers on the board here, I've heard Harbaugh talk about how they need to bolster their offensive line. He does like himself a good offensive line in the past. And I think that you couldn't go wrong with Joe Alt and you couldn't go wrong with Malik Neighbors. The thing i am come across is that there are just so many better options if you trade back. And so what I think I'm going to do here is I think the realistic thing here is that the Vikings move up to five to take their guy, JJ McCarthy. So let's figure out the trade details. So we're going to go with the Vikings. Uh, and they definitely give up. Um, Chargers. Right here. It's going to be a first round trade. And then I'd say Vikings probably throw in. You know, because the Vikings are training up for that quarterback, it's going to be that extra, the Chargers will be able to call in on that extra bounty. So I think they could we could see both of the Chargers first, I mean, both of the Vikings first round picks go in here to do that. You think uh, that's enough, though? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you know, you're trading two first round picks, both of which in a relatively deep draft class where the uh, Chargers can build up a bit of thing. I think that's worth it. Also, I think, you, I think you at least thrown a third uh, for yeah. next year. Yeah, I can maybe. see them further in that future further than maybe like a late round pick, pick swap. Yeah. So maybe like 230 for like 225. Yeah. And something like that I think would get 
both teams pretty happy. And also, you know, the char- you know, Vikings, they don't pick up that extra first round pick for nothing. Like, right. And they're taking their quarterback of the future, JJ McCarthy. And this leaves you with the Giants here at six. All right, yeah, so the Giants have a lot of holes, obviously. They're not really a great spot. You know, they, there's a chance, I don't think they will, but there is a chance that, you know, JJ McCarthy falls into this spot that they pick him up. I think it's more likely to go with Malik Neighbors out of LSU here. You know, their off the line isn't amazing, but they do have some solid tackles, especially with Andrew Thomas there. Uh, but really, I don't think they have that, even the offensive front anymore, that uh, Saquon Barkley's gone. And if, you know, if they're set on giving Daniel Jones another year, or if drafting, you know, maybe drafting a quarterback in the second round or third round to sit behind him, you have to be able to uh, give him some weapons to throw to, so he's not just throw it. So he doesn't have that excuse of, sure. I have nothing to throw to. All right, with my Tennessee, our Tennessee Titans on the board at seven. I mean, the pick's obvious. Got to go, Joel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just have to. Yeah, I, I could see a possibility where if it wasn't a QB run in the beginning that we end up trading back because Joel, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, they'd probably all be gone by then. So you could trade back, get Latham or Adunze or Brock Bowers, whoever, just... In this case, if all it's on the board, you pick up. You there's just don't put any thoughts to it. You need offensive line bad. Yeah, and honestly, this is probably the perfect position for Tennessee too, because you know there's going to be most like I'd be shocked if there's not three quarterbacks that go in the top six. I don't think there's any scenario where that doesn't happen at this point. For sure. And then you know at that point you're ended up with at least one of MHJ, Malik Neighbors, Joel, or uh, Romo Dunn. Odunze. So, really, you're winning either way, but I definitely think Joel should be the pick that we're running to make this year. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right, number eight. So, this is a hard one here. You know, the Falcons, they've got their new team here with the Rams defensive coordinator coming over, obviously. You know, they do need... Uh, they probably do need a quarterback, but I think this year they can go on addressing that with the signing of Kirk Cousins. Yeah, he should... No, probably not the, you know, obviously not the long-term answer, but at least for this year, maybe even next year, he should be a solid option for them. So I think instead here, they go with Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Just getting that really solid defense. Yeah, obviously, Raheem Morris has that defensive background, so I think he's going to want somebody like that. And I think this is just a good choice for them because of the just because of the talent that he has here, and that's the first defensive player off the board. Yeah, and in my opinion, it's... He is one of the elite, elite eight per se players in this draft. That being those being Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Drake McMay, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Joel, and Brock Bowers. And I, uh, yeah, I, I really like the fit there in yeah. Atlanta. So with the Bears pick here, I've got to go with Roman Duze. I think that an, a Duze is def- he's got a really high upside and having him with Caleb Williams having him with a very talented quarterback who's still learning just like Odunze Udu- is would definitely be a very a very good matchup for the team so I'm going with Odunze yeah I mean the Bears are in a really good position and also you have to remember that with the Bears training for Keenan, Al- Keenan Allen over the offseason, you know, that, that does give Odunze a good older wide receiver to learn from. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, up next, we got the Jets, who yeah, obviously the number one priority this year needs to be protecting uh, Aaron Rodgers. You know, we all saw what happened last year, four plays into the season, and uh, his Achilles goes, he's an older quarterback, he needs protection. So I think they go Olu uh, Fashano here. Just trying to protect that heel. He's one of the best, just pure athletes in this. Yeah, he has some of the best recovery. He definitely needs to clean up, but I think that the Jets can do that this year and hopefully protect Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I like that big. So on to this next big. Yes, Chargers do need offensive tackle. Luckily for them, it's a very deep class for tackles. You could get a solid starter in the second round. And I think you just got to take the last elite player on the board, and that is Brock Bowers. Give Herbert a big-bodied receiver 
slash blocking tight end to go in that Chargers offense with Harbaugh. And honestly, you just got to play the board at that point. And yeah. trading back and getting, you also have another first round pick you can use on tackle or receiver or whatever you need. So I think it's a win-win for them. I think Brock Bowers is such a good fit in LA. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Chargers definitely do need to improve. You know, you want to fire your coach and got in a top, yes, top six pick about it. But like the Chargers are played out of all the top 10 teams from the top eight teams. I'd say that the uh, Chargers are in the best position this year. Yeah. And you know, just going best player available is something that they definitely should be looking at doing. Yeah, and so now we are on the clock with the Broncos, who have the best quarterback room in the NFL now. Yeah, obviously, you know, the powerhouse that is Zach Wilson taking over there. Um, you know, really, I don't love this position for the Broncos. Yeah, I think I would have loved to have J.J. Mercari on the but I really would be surprised if he fell past 11, even if the Vikings don't trade up. Uh, so I, and yeah, I feel like it's too early, I think, to go with somebody like Penix or Bonex. I think that's probably more in the later part of the first round. So I could see them trading back here, but I think instead they're going to wait until the second round to do that and instead uh, go with... Actually, I do think they trade back in the first because there's not really any position, major position need that they have here. Unless you want to go with a guy like Latigo. So, uh, so I think they trade back with... What I think they, I think they could do is they trade back with the uh, Bills here. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Bills, Broncos. Uh, I think, obviously, Buffalo's going to have to go there first and it's probably their second and a future first uh, to get that. Actually, hold on. Not the Broncos. I second I just realized, let's see, let's host here. Completely forgot he existed there for a minute. So instead, I think like, the Broncos are going to go with Latilo Toe. I think he's probably one of the more talented guys in the draft. Has some medical question marks for sure, but you know the Broncos do really need that true defensive presence. And I think that is, that's something that uh, Latilo Toe could from you know six foot four, almost two sixty pounds, and then you know, the our, the Raz score is just off the charts nine point three seven. So I think that's one of the better riskier picks you can take in the first round here, and I. I think the Broncos are going to like to take that there. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, for the Raiders here, you for sure need a quarterback. And honestly, like you said earlier, I don't think there's a quarterback that's going to be there that's worth taking this high. So I think you just address depth and need. So I think you definitely need tackle. And I'm going to go with uh, Talese Fuaga, one of the Honestly, him, Alu, Latham, those guys all are honestly at the same level, in my opinion. It's just all up to upside, and I think Waga right now, I think has slightly better upside than Latham, so I'm going to go with Fuaga. I like, I like him as a prospect a little better. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can really go wrong with any of those free tackles there, especially if you're confident in your ability to uh, develop set tackle, so I think that's a really good pick there from Yeah, right, it makes me got the Saints, you know, I think, I think we can see the run on tackles continue. I think they go J.C. Latham here, you know, they're definitely in a position where they need to figure out what direction they're going. You know, you don't really have a like, clear movement anywhere, you know, you've got some, a mix of older guys, a coach who doesn't really seem to be living up to the standards that, you know, Sean Payton had and I really don't know where they're going here, so I think getting that tackle to develop it that could be your tackle for for seven or eight more years is definitely a valuable step in starting that rebuild process. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so moving on to the Colts. The Colts definitely need receiver, and they also really need cornerback. They've got one of the worst, in my opinion, cornerback rooms in the league, minus Kenny Moore. And honestly, Kenny Moore, in my opinion, isn't elite so I think you got to go with the player who has that elite upside with Tron Arnold you can get a receiver second round because the receiver has crazy depth this year luckily for them so I think that Arnold is the pick for the Colts yeah and I mean 
looking at corner, there's a lot of good options here. You know, Kenyon Mitchell from Toledo is also another solid option. But I really do think Terry Arnold is the premier corner in this draft class, and I don't think that Colts fans should be complaining about that. You know, no. yeah, just getting that corner that could be there for a long time. Yeah, they need that solid QB or cornerback one or two that can, uh, you know, stop Calvin Ridley. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely it. <laughs> yeah, the AFC South known for their Pro Bowl wide receivers. <laughs> See, up next we got the Seahawks, and this is another one that was a tricky situation where the board just really hasn't broken well for them. You know, I think they would have liked to have one of them, but I do think I wouldn't be surprised here if they went off the line here. I just don't know if there's a guard that I'd really value high enough. You know. They have uh, PFN has Christian Haynes as their highest guard. They might be able to say, you know, something like, you know, something might be able to slide inside, but I'd really would rather, if I'm the Seahawks here, I'd rather go with a guy like uh, Johnny Newton out of Illinois uh, and just get that pure, you know, get in a, with a stronger guy than a position need, as opposed to, you know, um, over, you know, reaching for a guy like Jared versus Kenny Mitchell, where you don't need it nearly as badly. All right, so Jaguars are on the board, and I think you definitely don't need edge. Jared Verse, in my opinion, would be the pick if it was just based off the board. I th- think you got to go with Brian Thomas. I think Brian Thomas is their guy. I mean, your wide receiver two right now, your wide receiver one and two is Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis. If you think about that, that's not good. So I think if you want, if you're saying, because I know a bunch of Jags fans still believe that Trevor Lawrence is their guy, which I still think he has a chance to be their guy. I think you just got to get him receiving help and Brian Thomas can do that for you. All right, next, your pick for the Bengals. Yeah, for the Bengals, you know, obviously, you know, you need to get, you need to keep Burrow protected. You need to give him support. You know, obviously, you know, T. Higgins is still under contract, so is Jamar Chase. But you know, Tyler Boyd, who's a really solid wide receiver, free for them for the last few years, is still a free agent. And T. Higgins is on the tag, so unless they get a long term deal done there, he could probably be hitting the free agency market. But I think for the time being, that I go with, uh, I'm going to here between Troy Fantano and Marius Mims. Marius Mims, you know, you've got the less. Time. You've got, you got, yeah, he's eight career starts, so he's a bit more risky, but you know, and then Fantano is probably the more safer bet. But I think Amarius Mims has a higher upside, but I do think they go with Troy Fantano here way more likely to be a plug and play tackle, which is, I think, after seeing last season, how last season ended for Burrow and how previous seasons have ended, that's something they have to do for sure. And they let Williams walk and yeah, you, you just got to get that tackle, that yeah. long term tackle. So, up next, we have the Los Angeles Rams. Rams definitely need defense. Like, that's their biggest name. They, they lost they lost Aaron Donald to retirement, which is a huge, huge loss. One of the best defensive players of this era. I think you just got to make it up and go with Jared Verse. Yes, you do need that spot where you do need that position of defensive tackle where you lost Aaron Donald, but I think that you still got to get that edge help. And Jared versus the upside there is insane. He's a first round type, first top 10 level playmaker. It's just his injury concerns and getting him here at 19 is a safe bet in my opinion. So. All right, yeah, so up next we got the uh, Steelers who, you know, obviously drafted Roger Jones last season. I, th- I think they continue that Georgia tackle combo with Marius Mims here. Obviously, he's a bit raw, but the Steelers have been very good at developing players over the last, you know, since just traditionally they've been very good at it, and I think they continue that with him. For sure. All right, with the Dolphins here, I, I'm trying to find – could you imagine if they took Xavier Worthy here? That would be criminal. But uh, anyway, <laughs> had to throw that out there. I think they, they 
could go with Powers Johnson. Yes, it's extremely risky to go with a center. He's labeled as a center, I guess. But I think he could honestly be a plug and play in the interior. And I think that they definitely need any position on the offensive line. Right now, Guyton, I like him. I don't like him first round, though. And the thing with, shoot, where is it? There is. Uh, Powers Johnson is that he, in my opinion, is the biggest. He, in my, this is very far-fetched, but I think he has the potential to be Hall of Fame. Like, I honestly think he has that, just that skill. And kind of reminds me of Jason Kelsey. Um, Yeah, just get to all the help he can use help him get that next contract yeah uh, and now the eagles on the board who i think could could have also used jackson powers johnson there but uh they're on the board yeah i think uh the eagles pick up Kenyon mitchell here you know i think he's one of the better corners if not the best corner in this in this draft and i just think he's gonna slot in very nicely there yeah for sure all right with the chargers they took bowers and they traded back so this is originally the Vikings pick, I think you just got to go offensive tackle with the best offensive tackle available, which is uh, Guyton from Oklahoma. I really like him as a prospect. I think you just got to take the best on the board, and that's who Guyton is. So on to the next pick, Cowboys. All right, yeah, the Cowboys. Obviously, they've fallen short in the playoffs the last few years, and that's something that they definitely get over the hump on here. But I really don't think they have – a person that they can address right now. You obviously, I don't think they'd be against trading down here, but I think instead what they're going to do is they're going to go with Byron Murphy. It is one of, you know, obviously there is a few character concerns, you know, with, with the whole ref recently, but yeah, you know, I think that just on pure talent, he's one of the better players in this draft. Yeah, for sure. All right, on the board now is the Vi- or the Packers. Excuse me. They do need they. Definitely need defensive help. This is a tough spot here. I think they gotta go Cooper DeGene. I think Cooper DeGene is the, at least, a, he's definitely a first round talent. Yeah. I think you could plug him into the corner and that he'd be fine. So I think him at 25 is a safe bet for them. Yeah, I mean, just that versatility on him gives you the strength to do it. Yeah. All right, so the Buccaneers, I think they go Trump Robinson here. You know, one of them, again, one of them, I think that should be an easy pick for them. It fills up a major position of need, and it gets, uh, you know, they don't really need that much help on offense right now. You know, they kept Mike Evans, they kept Baker. Their line looks solid this year, and I think they should need a buff on that defense. Sure. So on to this next pick, Cardinals. I think they go with DB. It just, whether if it's Nate Wiggins or Kool-Aid, both guys are very injury prone so far in their career. I'm not saying that they will be for the rest of their career. I'm just saying I think Kool-Aid has the high, way higher upside. I think the ceiling is through the roof with Kool-Aid. It's just a matter of him staying healthy. So I think they take the chance here at 27 and draft. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense there. And again, yeah, either of those two are either of those two are bad picks. I think they should be happy with either of them. Yeah. Okay, right, so 28, I think that the Bills go with Donnie Mitchell. Yeah, you got the choice of either the Texas wide receivers here. I just think that for what the Bills want to do, a Donnie Mitchell take makes it more sense. Uh, yeah, just a bit more of that over the middle wide receiver. Yeah, for sure. Don't need to put much thought into that one, to be honest. So we are on the clock with the Lions. Edge, DB, both big needs here. I'm personally just going to go with they definitely need cornerback. If you watch that playoff game, it's their defensive, it's their secondary that really lost them those big that big game towards the end. Also their coach and whatever. Uh, but I think Nate Wiggins here can definitely fill a big role in that defense. Yeah, I mean that fits that slots in really nicely and should be promising for the future years. Yeah. So next we got the Ravens, and you know obviously they were looking like a really powerful team coming into this year. Uh, you know they kept 
one of their defensive keys. They added Patrick Queen at linebacker, and then obviously on offense, yeah, they had Derrick Henry there. Uh, and I think they just continue to buff up that offense here. You know, I think Xavier Worthy or Keon Coleman would probably be the pick here, and I think they go with Keon Coleman just because I think he fits that uh, their game a bit better. You know, he's a bigger wide receiver. He can uh, get there, whereas Xavier Worthy is going to be a bit more of your deep threat type wide receiver, which I don't think that they were looking for as much. Yeah, for sure. So with this next pick with the 49ers, they're, they're pretty much a very well-balanced team as it is now. You definitely need a tackle to pair along with Williams on the right side. So, man, I think it's honestly tough to say. There's some good, I think this would be a good spot to uh, draft. I think this would be a good time to draft Jordan Morgan. I think, yeah. I think he, he's got, I think he's, if you plug him in there, I think he has that potential to be a average at worst, average at worst type tackle. And having him on the right side is going to be a lot, it's easier said than done, but I think it's a little bit easier than left in my opinion. So. I think him learning from Williams as well would be just insane. So, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense there. Up next, we have the Chiefs. All right, yeah, the Chiefs. And I think, you know, obviously they, their biggest issue this year was their wide receivers. And it's gotten worse this offseason, you know, with Rushy Rice obviously getting arrested and potentially facing a suspension, if not criminal charges. And I think they go with Xavier Worthy here. He fits into that mold of similar to what Tyreek Hill did for him back uh, when he was on the team of just a true deep threat wide receiver who should be very dangerous to go against. Yeah, for sure. All right. That is our final mock draft of the year. If you guys are new, please consider subscribing. It would mean so much to us. And uh, yeah, excited for the draft. And hope you guys are too. And peace out, everyone. Yep. Have a good one.